Like every one of you, I too was shocked on hearing of the death of Father Stan Swami. I am still unable to get over the sorrow. It continues to trouble me. Along with the initial shock followed by sorrow is a feeling of deep sense of shame that continues to disturb me. Very few things could make me take my mind off the death of an 84-year-old Jesuit priest suffering from Parkinson's, dying of COVID in a hospital with no hope of getting bail to be with his own people in Ranchi, especially when he could sense that he was nearing his end. Should Father Stan Swami have died? Died in this way? Why did it happen? Who is responsible for this? Was the Indian state threatened by Father Stan Swami? Why was it threatened? Is our Republic safer today with his death? These questions haunt me. Many people found it inhuman to detain an 84-year-old for months. A lot of commentators pointed out the insensitivity of our executive and judiciary to Father Stan Swami's ill health. We are all moved to tears because he died. Good evening, my name is Barkha Dath and I'm here this evening to talk about Father Stan Swami. If you haven't heard of him, you should. We're talking about an 83-year-old man who's a Parkinson's patient who has been in jail, accused of terror links, but in jail denied a sipper and a straw. The larger question is why Father Stan Swami in his 80s could be any sort of threat, why basic human rights and principles of justice should not be followed, why somebody like him who is clearly suffering, who is clearly ailing, should be even denied the basic, the basic things that he needs to get by from day to day. This is an absolutely horrendous case which leaps out in every way that you can imagine. I mean, the charge against this uh, person who is known to be one of the most uh, gentle tribal rights activists that you can ever imagine. The charge that he is involved with terrorism, etc. is on the face of it absurd. And to thereafter imprison him, deny him bail and deny him even a sipper is the height of cruelty. आधार स्टेन स्वामी की मौत नहीं ये हत्या है हत्या है हत्या है आधार स्टेन स्वामी की मौत नहीं ये हत्या है हत्या है हत्या है 
आदर स्टेन स्वामी की मौत नहीं यह हत्या है एन डी टी वी हैज एक्सेस्ट अ न्यू रिपोर्ट बाय यू एस बेस्ड फॉरेंसिक लेबोरेटरी विच शोज हाउ इंक्रिमिनेटिंग एविडेंस वॉज प्लांटेड ऑन द कंप्यूटर ऑफ अ की अक्यूज इन द भीमा कोरेगांव केस बाय अ साइबर अटैकर दिस वॉज द सेम केस इन विच एटी फोर ईयर ओल्ड ट्राइबल राइट्स एक्टिविस्ट टैन स्वामी वॉज एन एक्यूज ही डायड इन अ मुंबई हॉस्पिटल वेटिंग फॉर बेल Till the end Swami like the others in the case maintained that the key evidence against them brought by the National Investigating Agency supposed letters from Maoists was planted on their computers now the new report by the Massachusetts based Arsenal Consulting bolsters that claim even raising the possibility that Swami's computer may have been targeted according to Arsenal this is one of the most serious cases involving evidence tampering that they've ever encountered What is happening to me is not something unique happening to me alone. It's a broader uh, process that is taking place all over the country. We are all aware how prominent intellectuals, lawyers, writers, poets, activists, student leaders—they are all put into jail just because they have expressed their dissent or raised questions about the ruling powers of the India. so we are part of the process as a term i am in a way i am happy to be part, part of this process because i'm i'm not a silent spectator but i am part of it part of the game and ready to pay the price whatever be it all these only made the state's ugly and cruel face look uglier and even more cruel let our focus not waver from where it should be the brutal iron fist that's what stan swami's death requires us to do should the state and by extension the government of the day be allowed to go by subjective and unsubstantiated opinions or presumptions i have no doubt about who killed father stan swami do you i think today from the ashes of father stan will rise up phoenix birds from the downtrodden to claim their rightful place in history <laughs>